Once upon a time, if you could only spend a limited amount of money on a computer, you had to accept that it would be slow. Those times are behind us. You can get a Chromebook, an iPad, and even some Windows laptops for under $500 that will run circles around the Surface Go 3, even the higher spec model that I'm testing with a Core i3 processor that costs $759.98 with the fancier all-contra type cover. The Go 3 starts at $399.99 with a Y-series processor and a paltry 64GB of slower eMMC storage and 4GB of RAM. I can't imagine anybody using that addition for anything more than light web browsing. I've always said the Surface Go is a fine little computer if you understand its limitations and are willing to work within them. But by the third generation, you'd think Microsoft would have found a way to either remove more of those limits or provide better trade-offs for them. Unfortunately, neither of those things have happened this year. Once upon a time, if you could only spend a limited amount of money on a computer, you had to accept that it would be slow. Those times are behind us. You can get a Chromebook, an iPad, and even some Windows laptops for under $500 that will run circles around the Surface Go 3, even the higher spec model that I'm testing with a Core i3 processor that costs $759.98 with the fancier all-contra type cover. The Go 3 starts at $399.99 with a Y-series processor and a paltry 64GB of slower eMMC storage and 4GB of RAM. I can't imagine anybody using that addition for anything more than light web browsing. Best Cheap Laptop 2022 Microsoft Surface Go 3 The Go 3 looks just like a tiny Surface Pro. It works with Surface pins, but doesn't support the haptics on the newer pin. It works with Surface pins, but not haptics. I've always said the Surface Go is a fine little computer if you understand its limitations and are willing to work within them. But by the third generation, you'd think Microsoft would have found a way to either remove more of those limits or provide better trade-offs for them. Unfortunately, neither of those things have happened this year. The long and, especially, short of this review is simply this, four and a half hours. That's the longest I was able to keep the Surface Go 3 running in active use. One of the apps I was running was Power Hungry, that'd be Slack, but the only other app was the Edge browser with somewhere around a dozen tabs. That's it. When I took the Go 3 outside and needed to crank the brightness up, that battery life dropped to 3. I'm not sure where Microsoft gets its 11-hour estimate, but it's far from reality. If the battery life were better, my old advice about working within this computer's limitations would still apply. It has Windows 11 by default. Read Tom Warren's full review here. And though the edges are rough, the interface overall feels really nice and usable on this smaller, 10.5-inch touchscreen. Snap Assist for tiling windows is especially useful with this smaller screen, since it's harder to get windows to the arrangement I'm used to on bigger displays. Perhaps the most baffling part of the Surface Go 3 is that it isn't using an ARM-based processor, like the Surface Pro X. If it did, I have to imagine it would get the benefits of longer battery life without taking too much of a speed hit. Even the Core i3 version can't be described as fast. Perhaps those aforementioned IT pros wouldn't be able to run the apps they need on ARM. Or perhaps Microsoft simply didn't want to spend the R&D budget necessary to redesign the Surface Go 3 around a new chip, 